Given a set of processes that are a result of the process planning, uh, we need to understand how they fit together into our entire manufacturing system. So we'll look at system design. And here the goals, of course, uh, relate to producing a product that is within the design specification. Specifically, we're concerned about the value that's being added to the material as it moves through our system. And so we understand already something about where we are adding value and where we're not adding value. Our material flow has to be controlled in order to satisfy the customer demand. Uh, otherwise, customer uh, may be missing their order and we certainly don't want to miss those delivery dates. The material flow, of course, has to support all the processes in our system. And what we'll do is try to minimize the contribution of non-value added time during that material flow. So here's basic black box system here where we have a rate, R sub A, and outside that is viewed as raw material coming into our system. Once that material enters our system, the actual manufacturing component, not uh, inventory and so forth, uh, we think of that as being work in process. And then we exit the system, we go to the customer at the rate of demand by the customer. And so this material flow has to satisfy R sub D. Inside of our manufacturing system, we need to be able to support the flow between processes. There's also a time dimension here what does it take to move through our entire system? And of course, you understand that to be the manufacturing lead time. Well, let's look at what's happening inside of our system. The flow is a little more complex, as you can see here, where we have uh, fabrication, finishing, and assembly processes. And I've just grouped them into, uh, we're not implying any specific uh, order here, but we're grouping them into categories. And then, up here, I've got the, in the red, these are locations in our facility where we are storing material. And so what we see here is a lot of flow to fabrication, uh, both from raw material inventory and work in process. So we think of transformative processes here, typically the primary manufacturing processes. And then if we have any finishing operations, we're going to flow into uh, that set of operations, or if there are no finishing operations, will flow directly at this rate into assembly. Or if we're assembly only, then we'll take this path where we take parts and add them to our assembly, such as bolts, fasteners, and so forth. Finally, from assembly, we'll move into the finished goods, or if there's no assembly, we'll go directly at this rate from finishing to finished goods. So depending on the nature of the product we're creating, we can have a variety of flows in our system. The storage of this material is not value adding, but it does play a role in the overall performance of our system. Some of the concerns that you should have at this point is, first of all, all those processes that we've designed in the process planning stage, how will they fit together? And when we start viewing material through the overall system now, not in the uh, process itself, but what kind of state would describe that material? One way to look at it is to say, well, the process could, the material could be in a process going through that transformation, or it could be sitting in storage somewhere. And if that's true, how and where do we store the material? So do we store it right next to the process? Do we store it in a separate working process area? The other state we could be in would be transferred. Now, these are the only possibilities. Either I'm in the process, in storage, or I'm in a transfer. If we're going to transfer the material, then we have to answer the question, how will that material be tr transferred? This material flow is going to affect our performance in terms of production rate. It's not the only contribution, but it will certainly contribute. And how can we minimize the storage, because that's a direct cost, uh, to that will be added. And then how do we reduce that cost, whether it's direct or indirect? First, let's start with the structure of our system. When we think of structure, we think of topologies. In other words, classes of structures that are well suited to the product we're producing. 
So we need to structure our set of manufacturing processes that were a result of the process planning. This topology will give us the relationships between our processes and it will tell us something about what's going to affect our product flow. In order to do this, we need to answer this question. What are the characteristics of the system based upon the portfolio of products we're producing and our customer base that we're providing those products to? The fundamental types, and there can be hybrids of each one of these, are the job shop, flow line, group technology, flexible manufacturing, and uh, product structure. Let's take a look at these structures. First of all, the job shop is quite a common structure, and the reasons for that. What we're going to do in the job shop configuration is specialized by process. So the colors here are indicating that we've grouped together all the workstations that are performing the same type of process, such as this might be a set of turning workstations. So I have multiple choices perhaps as to which station I will visit because they can all do turning. Maybe I have milling here, finishing. Again, we're grouping our system based upon process. That's the key. And then what we'll do is take batches of material and cause it to flow from one grouping to another based on your material flow process chart. And so that will be based upon the actual process. And so what we see is material flow from one area to another. And then perhaps back again. Now this flow can be complex or appear chaotic. Typically you're going to see this in the low or at the low end of the medium volume range. Because as we increase the volume, this flow becomes very difficult to manage and you can start losing batches of material, and that's problematic. The flow link uh, configuration is quite common when we have single or very similar products that we're trying to create. Versus in the job shop, typically you're dealing with a variety of products that you're providing to different customers. In the flow line, it's very basic. We take our processes in order of precedence and create the sequential order of operations based upon our operations process chart. You're usually going to see this in high volume because we have to be able to justify these workstations being committed to this particular sequence. Group technology is a hybrid of that flow line because we recognize that in um, many companies what we have are slight variations in the product and therefore there may be certain processes that do not follow the exact same sequence. So we say that perhaps they're similar based upon part families that we'll see later, but we do allow for minor deviations in the operations. In other words, the material flow process charts are not exactly the same. The flow, material flow, will be dedicated to the part family, not to individual parts. And this can handle high volume just like the flow line. So here you see uh, this hybrid example where for a particular set of parts in the part family, I'm going to go through these two processes, and for other parts in that same part family, I go through these two processes. So as you can see, it looks like a flow line with some additional workstations to be able to handle that additional need for processes. The flexible manufacturing system is meant to address a different scenario and it has a network structure as you can see here. By network, we mean that we can flow from any workstation to another workstation, and that gives us this flexibility. Again, the products move according to the material flow process chart, uh, so that hasn't changed, but as you can see here, if I've got a lot of flexibility, the cost that I will pay is a complex material flow. And in order to handle this complex material flow, we typically resort to some type of automated material handling system that will take care of all this routing and therefore uh, not make any mistakes in terms of where the product should visit next. You often see this approach where there's medium volume as well as a high variety in products. So the group technology is not uh, capable of handling 
the uh, large variety of different products, so we turn to the flexible manufacturing system. The last configuration we'll talk about is the product configuration. And this is typically used when you have a scenario where it's difficult to move the product uh, because of the scale of the product. And you can think of different examples such as shipbuilding. All right, if you go to a shipyard, you'll see that we construct it in a bay there and that product never moves until we actually uh, release it. So the product is in some fixed position and uh, we have a centralized configuration. By centralized, we mean all material flows to the product. Scale of product, you're really talking about a low volume scenario. Obviously no product variety. Everything is flowing directly to the product. You can see what's going to happen here in this case. We tend to get a lot of congestion as the material is coming in in all directions. So there's a lot of traffic control involved in performing this type of a system configuration. If you look at the variables product variety on the x-axis here and uh, production volume, uh, let's say on an annual basis, we note that the different system configurations will depend upon uh, where we are in the scale. Nice thing about Job Shop is you can see we can handle a wide variety, but as soon as we start increasing production volume, that approach becomes untenable. Product, as you can see, is in this lower left-hand corner. Uh, again, it uh, tends to be for very uh, specific scenarios related to the scale of a product. Flow line, traditionally very high volume, low variety. Group technology, as you can see here, spans a lot of the range, and so it gives us a lot more flexibility. Finally, the flexible manufacturing system. Uh, typically, when your product variety becomes quite high and you have a reason, reasonably high production volume.